the 2023 Trust House New Zealand Cycle Classic will once again see riders from across the world converge on the Wairapa for five days of international stage racing. Fifteen teams comprising of ten nations will take on the winery district before contesting around New Zealand's capital Wellington. This will include the introduction of a circuit around Miramar on the penultimate day. Since its inception in 1988, the tour has seen several champions introduce themselves to the world stage. These have included the likes of Brian Fowler, Robbie McEwen, Julian Dean, Richie Port and George Bennett. At the end of five days, who will add their name to the illustrious list of winners of New Zealand's only UCI 2.2 sanctioned race? Well, Keegan, welcome back to the New Zealand Cycle Classic, and it's a big day on the uh, tour this year. Yeah, for sure, a big day today. Um, good to be back. Unfortunately, the sun's not out today, but, I mean, it's not all bad. Of course, you've got fond memories of last year's stage. Yeah, definitely the stage last year. Managed to take it out after that um, big group slipped up the road, and for sure we'll have a plan today to do the same, but, um, yeah, it's awesome to see George bringing back some international teams as well, so... For sure, the competition this year will be back up there. Yeah, it certainly adds to the flavour, doesn't it? And I guess there's a few unknown factors with some of those riders. Yeah, for sure. I mean, a few of the boys coming off Aussie Nationals, I think they'll be on good form. But yeah, for sure, some of the internationals um, and a couple of the Euro teams, we don't really know too well. So, for sure. And how's the past 12 months been for you since the last tour? Uh, yeah, it's been awesome, eh? Huge stepping stone. Um, spent few months in Europe and then came home and did Southland um, and had a bit of a reset and back to do it all again. And a good team behind you again this year? Yeah for sure, um, Copeland's, I mean they just step it up every year with Copeland's and Boost Group bringing on wind space, um, so yeah back here again with them and plenty of other racing to come. Alright, well wish you all the best out there. Awesome, cheers. Well Ben, welcome to the New Zealand's uh, Cycle Classic, a bit of a damp day to day one. Yeah, a bit of a Tour of Southland vibes here, but that's what we like, so yeah, mastered and turning it on. And a good sized field with a lot of internationals this year. Yeah, it's going to be good to race international guys, you get a bit sick of racing the Kiwis all the time, so no, it'll be good, a few new faces, and yeah, see how they go. In a long stage, 158k, what do you expect today? Uh, yeah, traditionally it's pretty hard to predict, but try and make sure we get in all the moves, and yeah, make sure no times blow out too hard in the GC, and just yeah, keep up in the mix and give it a nudge in the final there. And of course for your team they had an outstanding tour of Southland so they'll be bringing in some good form and a lot of experience. Yeah our team couldn't have done much better down there we got rid of the average guys Josh who won it so he's moved on and now we're now we're ready to rumble new year 2023. Well joining us here is uh, Edward Pawson of course our junior worlds representative and stepping it up into the big ranks this year. Yeah yeah I'm pretty excited to be here first you know big race first tour that's you know longer than a three-day junior tour and um, yes yeah, super super psyched to get into it. And it's a young team, so tell us a bit about your team. Yeah, so just put together kind of this year, it's um, made up of, you know, the, most of the Junior Worlds crew that went over to Israel for the um, endurance men, and then uh, Dan Gardner, our team captain, won the Bluff stage of Southland. He's a, you know, legend and mentor, and we can't wait to see what we can do out there. Bit of a damp day to start the tour? Yeah, but weather doesn't really, you know, affect it too much, because, you know, everyone's experiencing the same conditions, so racing kind of just adapts to it, and you just race hard anyway. Well, welcome Dominic to you and your team to New Zealand. Yeah, thank you. Now, I understand you've been here for about a week getting ready for the tour? Yes, I think so. Two riders from us have a little bit health problems, so we don't know, but we will fight and we'll look uh, that we can go in groups, maybe, or for the final sprint on the little uh, hill. Yes, I think we have one or two riders, they can okay, go fast on this hill. Yeah. And what do you know about this tour? Yeah, I know I was five years ago. I will come here and it doesn't work. <laughs> um, and yeah, the last years I always ride with Jorge, the organizer. organizer. And uh, yes, I look every year the, the results and will we'll come to this, uh, to this stage race. And uh, yeah, now I'm very happy uh, and hope the stages can, uh, yeah, good for our team. Oh, we wish you and your team all the best for the week. Yeah, thank you.
The riders will today contest the longest stage of this year's tour at 158.1 kilometres, beginning in Masterton and making their way out for a two-time loop around Alfreton there of about 34k a circuit, which will include the Sprint Ace and the KOM before returning to the finish into Masterton and finishing up a short, sharp jaunt outside Sir Bob Charles's house. That's the way it looks here for today. We've got the past winner, Keegan Hornblow, from 2022 in there as one of the favourites coming into this particular stage. But a number of other riders potential to take out what is going to be a hard day on the bike as we see the rain pouring down here in the neutral section as they make their way out on the edge here of Masterton. There's been a few mechanicals already, so the neutral section has been extended as the 90 riders here from the 15 teams start to set themselves into position and readiness for the dropping of the flag for what is going to be a tough day out there on the roads around Masterton with this atrocious looking weather here for these riders and straight away you see as the flag gets dropped the riders are into it and already getting up around speeds of some 50 odd k an hour as they have a lot of undulations in this particular circuit here of the day this of course was the stage last year of which a number of the riders be very aware where we saw some 20 odd riders get away very early on in the stage and in essence saw a number of riders see their hopes of taking out the tour eliminated on day one so these riders in amongst the darkness here on these uh, cold and damp roads here this morning are going to be paying a lot of attention towards the front and speaking of which it looks like the St George colours there on the left and the maroon colours are very much to the fore here keeping a close eye on things also Russ Vallo the young team here from New Zealand they got themselves up towards the front end of the race as well as we see an early break get, up, get themselves off the front of the uh, race very hard in these conditions to do this as you can see already a bit of surface flooding starting to happen as the uh, break on the front there looks like he's being drawn back in by the uh, chasing uh, peloton here and not letting anyone get away here in these early stages of the uh, stage of this tour on day one everyone very nervous today at the start into uh, the getting out of masterton there as they line themselves up now having to contest their first big race of the year of course from many of these riders traveling a long way from over in europe and so forth to contest this race they won't know what's hit them here on day one as this rain continues to pelt down as it is across the entire north island at this point in time and again we can see the likes of the bolton equities black spoke team they're right up towards the front there We've seen a number of teams here trying to scramble across the front as a few of these riders try and get themselves a little bit of a gap as they come through for things such as the Sprint Ace, the KOM. We can start to pick up a few of the different colours there. Copeland's there. I think that could be Keegan Hornblow that's up there. And a few of them with one or two teammates involved. The green colours further back there, half a dozen or so, you might just pick out in, those, in the darkness here as the riders make their way round there towards Afferton here. That is the Keish Par Coop team from Australia. They've got riders all represented from Australia involved in this particular team here coming into play. And uh, they're coming in with some pretty good sort of form. So already you can see they've come here to play because being right up near the forefront right from the get-go again Bolton Equities right up there in the mix they've got a number of riders this year once again to try and contest this particular tour of course they took it out last year with Mark Stewart he's not here this year but they've got a strong contingent around as we see the young Southlander Hunter Goff for the Rush Vallow team here he heads off the frontier now just a few days ago he was busy riding on the grass tracks of Tuatapri in Southland and today he's contesting his uh, second uh, tour here he's done the tour of Southland he's done this tour here last year and now he's got himself off the front and we've already seen their colors that red looking color they've obviously had the heads up from the tour the team director to try and get themselves involved and be proactive as a number of colors are starting to regularly appear as we see again the green colors of case there but now things starting to settle down once again in the main peloton. We look to see who's involved. St. George going through there. Looks like Kirkazu rolling on through. Of course, the uh, sprint ace from last year. He's been given the job to get towards the front and try and control things here. As we come through, this is just back behind the uh, sprint. Very hard to pick up, of course, the uh, sprint ace. But we have those results for us here as we make our way through the uh, stage. These riders really starting to stretch out now. 
And of course, they'll be coming up towards the uh, feed station later on. Now, that's going to be a bit of a challenge in itself, of course, in these cold conditions, these cold, damp conditions here today to try and ensure that these riders keep themselves well fed and that there because, of course, the challenge is just keeping the hands on the bars and concentrating in such a large group in these uh, tough conditions is a tough event in itself without even attempting to try and take on the food and so forth. But you can see they've got their swan ears on the side of the road waiting for them there to pick up the food. Some of them will have some rice and it was being wrapped up in the old tin foil earlier on, the gels, etc., waiting for them. A number of them have got their pockets pretty well full to take on what is a very tough stage, a long stage indeed of some 158 kilometers for these riders. As they go over the top of one of the uh, hill climbs uh, here of the day, and you can see a rider's now starting to spread across the road. So if you're new to the cycling game, that's a pretty good indication that things have eased off. And hence why you'll see Three or four riders taking full advantage of that as the brakes go on amongst a few riders. And again, trying just to sneak off there in this uh, tough looking terrain here with the rain pouting down on the riders. It's very easy for one or two riders just to slip off. And if you're too far back in the bunch, miss the entire break that could be potentially the break of the day. Again, we see some maroon looking colors and I'm trying to make it out. I think it's St. George once again. The uh, Pro Continental team there, based out, out of Australia. They do a lot of racing throughout uh, Asia, throughout New Zealand and Australia there. They've got one of their riders uh, off the front, and they've been pretty prominent here in trying to get involved in a lot of that. Could be Aiken, I think, and that's, uh, who's now been drawn back into it. So they've had one or two of their guys often trying to get themselves off the front. They're made up of three Kiwis and three Aussies in that St. George Continental team as the rain. There's a bit of reprieve for the riders here and we get a bit of a closer look and a clearer look for the cameras here of the various colours for our first proper time here today in the tour. There's a number of the riders of course riding with their jackets and so forth here to try and protect themselves as the hand goes up. It's Keegan Hornblow, one of the riders who looks like he's uh, just had a puncher and that, that's not good news for him and his team. They'll be starting to head towards the back to try and drag him through. A number of punches happening there. Coming over race radio, we've had something like 16 in the space of about a 500-meter stretch here earlier today. So this is the sort of terrain, the sort of conditions. With this rain pouting down here, it will loosen up the gravel on the side of the road. It will make the oil slippery there from the various uh, vehicles. A number of trucks go through this area over the year and uh, can make things quite challenging and it's very much puncher material. As we see, three riders now starting to establish themselves off the front here. St. George is involved there. Rushley Vallow there again, once again on the front. Keish is right up there, the Australian team. And it looks like one or two other riders now making themselves available towards the uh, front here as well. And so we have five riders as they approach the first of the hill climbs today. It looks like Jack Aiken of St. George, number 16. You've got Matt Wilson of the Rush Vallow team, 114, 72 there. Edward Britz of the Cache team. You've got Sean Moran there of the, tam of the tandem team, number 95. And he's also joined by one of his teammates, and that with Brendan Bauer of the tandem team. Now, that's an interesting move. To be able to have two teammates makes such a difference. As we see the rest of the peloton roll over top of the hill here and now have to contest with what is an interesting descent at the best of times, but let alone in these uh, slippery, damp sort of conditions here. The riders spreading themselves right out. Those five riders off the front, though, they're trying to make their bid for glory, or are they just purely going out there to try and pick up the points for the King of the Mountains? Either way, they know full well who's doing the chasing. They would have had word there from the commissaires that the bunch is chasing. They've got about 30-odd seconds on them at the moment, but there was no doubt about it. It was the Bolton Equities Black Spoke Pro Cycling Team with the likes of Curry, Mudgeway, Bat, Jones, Oram, and Burnett. They are the ones that have been put onto the front to try and shut down this group of uh, five riders in here, and it looks like they're going to be reeled into it there as we see these riders chewing on the handlebars through these damp and, ch and challenging conditions here. I know I've said it a number of times, but there's no two ways about it. Today is very tough indeed. In fact, it's just come through that the officials have made the call that they're going to shorten the stage here. So instead of doing two laps, where well, there would have been two sprint aces and two KOMs in the mix there, they have made what I would suggest is a pretty good sort of a call here. 
to shorten the stage by that one circuit, which will bring it down from 158 to around about 124 kilometers. To be fair, I think uh, from the safety perspective, certainly a good move from them here. And at this point in time, I think a lot of these riders will be very, very relieved. As we approach now about 25k out from Masterton here, and it's the dark colors of a breakaway, and it looks like the familiar figure here of James Harvey. So Harvey pounding on the pedals in an individual time trial effort here to try and secure a stage win. But you can see now he's been very quickly joined by four other riders. And what a foursome to have with him here. He's got one of his teammates, that's Sander White, who's uh, number 22, who's one of the under 23 riders going for that category in this tour as well. Also, number five there, James Oram of the Black Spoke team. He's made the junction across, along with the Australian riding in the Japanese Kanan team. That is Ryan Kavner and Ben Oliver, the silver medalist from the mountain biking for My to Q, New Zealand Cycle Project. They are your five as they enter with under 5k to go into Masterton there. You can see the lights in the distance of the chasing peloton. Can these five keep the rest of the field out as they swing up into the final climb? It's about 800 odd metres climbing here as they make their way into Masterton Township here. Who's going to take it out? Will it be from the breakaway of five? That is correct. It is Orem. Orem is away. Orem is too strong. Orem takes out the win. And that is the third time that Black Spoke have done this on this day one of the tour to take out the victory here and put themselves firmly into the yellow jersey only seconds later back to the chasing peloton. Ryan Kavner of Australia looked like he was the man across the line for second place there for the Canaan team. In third, Xander White, and that should also put him into the under-23 category as well. Meanwhile, we saw the likes of Ben Oliver in fourth place and James Harvey. They were your top five here on day one of the tour. Well, congratulations. A fantastic for day for you and the team today. Yeah, awesome. Uh, first race of the year, um, first win of the year as well, so couldn't be more happy. The conditions are uh, pretty challenging out there for the riders. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a little bit different when you're on the bike. Um, it wasn't too bad, but yeah, there's a lot of water on the ground and there's been a lot of rain in the area recently. And um, yeah, the stones potholes and the like so pretty hard to see in these kind of conditions so it was a very smart call by the organizers to shorten the stage today and as you said first race for the year for a number of these riders was there a lot of nerves out there in the peloton uh yeah yeah you could see as soon as the rain started to fall there were a lot of guys kind of questioning their clothing choices in the start line and hiding away um and then yeah for the first 30 40k there were a lot of kind of uh, sheepish moves no, no one really wanted to get um stuck into the race so um, but yeah, after the first hour or so, everyone was comfortable and happy to, happy to race. Now with about 20k to go, James Harvey goes off the front. What was the reaction in the field? Uh, there wasn't too much of a reaction, which um, kind of, in a sense, played into our hands a bit. Um, we had a few boys trying to make moves to get across, um, and then Ollie Jones was actually just keeping a nice tempo on the front, um, just so James didn't get too much of a gap, and I thought, oh, I'll try and slip away here. Uh, managed to get away with Ben Oliver um, and then Xander White came across to us with uh, Ryan Kavanagh so um, yeah pretty crafty we group there some some guys I definitely had my eye on for the overall of this race already um, so I'd try not to do too much coming into that finish. And let's talk a little bit about that finish for those who haven't seen it before it's quite a short sharp nuggety climb. Yeah yeah I think if you were to go 100% from the bottom to the top it's about a, a minute um, and it's yeah, just that gradient where you kind of start to lose momentum towards the top. So yeah, I thought, mm, stuff it, I've got to try it. Um, I knew where the finish was um, from uh, racing it in the previous years. So I thought, oh, if I go early, hopefully the guys hesitate or they think it's too early um, and that finish line wasn't in sight. I uh, managed to yeah, get that jump on them and then um, Ryan was very close to the finish there. I was, um, I was thinking surely surely he won't but um, yeah, managed to get the win which was great. And of course it's not the first time that Black Spoke's taken out this particular stage. No, no, uh, very first time the race went up there we had uh, Aaron Gate win the, win the sprint um, and then the following year uh, Luke Mudgeway in a, in a solo move um, and then yeah, now myself from a small breakaway so uh, yeah, it's a very very good stage and this is a great tour for the team. So let's look at uh, going forward, of course, into Martinborough tomorrow, then the big climbs on Wednesday before heading into Wellington. Yeah, yeah, I mean, tomorrow should be a great opportunity to see um, if we can give Luke an opportunity in the sprint. Um, it's usually a fairly straightforward stage. 
Uh, Admirals with the now the addition of actually finishing up Admirals instead of just the, the steep climb. Um, that'll change the race a bit, you know, there's definitely some good climbers here who haven't shown themselves. Um, hopefully we have enough of a buffer and the guys are riding well enough that we can have, have some fun up there. Um, and then, yeah, Saturday stage looks um, looks really cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, that should be some fun, potentially another sprint. Um, but, yeah, yeah, once again, that plays into our hands. Well, congratulations on an outstanding day for you and the team. Awesome. Thank you very much.